You might have thought the guy did a good job of helping the poor monkey get to the shore, even though it was swimming the other way. The act does look heroic at first glance, but here's what really happened. Okay, here's some more. That's it. Got enough food for the kids. It's time to swim back. What a great day we're having today. Hold on, little monkey. We've got you. Everything will be fine. Let me go. It's all right. Calm down. We'll get you back on land now. But I need to go the other way. <laughs> You're saved. No need to thank me. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Actually, you just witnessed this guy making the poor primate waste a ton of energy for nothing. All the monkey wanted to do was swim to another island. No harm in that, right? Just picture this. The monkey put in so much effort and didn't even get anywhere in the end. Even if the video's title suggests the person helped the monkey because it was exhausted from a fight and was forced into the water, it still would have been wiser not to intervene. The monkey in the video is a proboscis monkey, a species known for their weird noses. Where's the nose, you might wonder? Well, it's just a female, and they have less noticeable noses than males. Now, most species of monkeys don't like to swim and prefer not to do so unless absolutely necessary, but not the proboscis monkey. These monkeys live in Indonesia, which is known to have a lot of water, so in order to survive, the animals have had to adapt. During the rainy months, the entire forest where they live gets flooded. You can survive in a swamp without knowing how to swim, but not for long. Swimming serves a practical purpose for these primates. It helps them find food. To find the young and tender leaves that make up a large part of their diet, these animals have to cover extensive distances. Swimming enables them to do this more quickly. In fact, proboscis monkeys can swim for several miles while foraging. Scientists have even noticed that they possess a kind of partial webbing between their fingers and toes. Although it's not easy to spot when not in the water. Can you see it? Neither can I. Proboscis monkeys are so comfortable in and around the water that they even prefer to sleep on the riverbank. When threatened by predators such as clouded leopards, proboscis monkeys leap from branches hanging over the river and fall into the water with a loud splash. Basically, whenever they don't know what to do, their go-to approach is to swim, and they do it as loudly as they can. The sound of splashing can be loud enough to momentarily spook crocodiles lurking in the water. This is how monkeys get a chance to get to the other shore before the crocodile realizes that its lunch has just swam away. Actually, the rule not every animal needs to be pulled out of the water doesn't apply to monkeys alone. A couple of years ago, a wild boar was rescued off the coast of Tuscany. However, boars, like pigs, are excellent swimmers, so perhaps the boar should not have been rescued after all. Perhaps it had some reason to be in the water. Actually, sometimes you don't have to rescue animals during a fire. Before jumping to write angry comments, allow me to explain myself. This captivating video that went viral on the web showcases a rabbit's daring journey through the immense Thomas Fire in California. As the flames rage on, a man rushes to the rescue, halting at the fire's edge, trying to free the rabbit from the burning bushes. In a moment, the rabbit fearlessly leaps through the same flame gap once more, compelling the man to scoop it up, cradling the animal against his chest. This is indeed some intense footage. It went viral. Some people on the internet called the man's actions heroic, and some called them stupid. Most, however, seemed convinced that the man risked his life to save the rabbit. Good for him. Except that an animal at the edge of a fire sometimes doesn't need rescuing at all. In fact, it may have a very good reason for subjecting itself to such risk. Wild animals are actually good at dealing with wildfires. Yes, it's a scary phenomenon, but fires are still a more or less regular feature of many ecosystems, according to ecologists. That is to say, they're perfectly normal. According to a January 2000 report from the U.S. Forest Service, when a wildfire sweeps through an area, it usually doesn't kill a lot of animals outright. Small mammals that live in burrows sometimes wait out fires underground. If the animal burrows are well ventilated, most burrow dwellers do just fine. But what could possibly make a rabbit run like that along the edge of a fire? There isn't much research on how animals behave during wildfires since most biologists don't stick around with firefighters. It's just dangerous. But such research does exist! Some people might argue that animals are just as scared of fire or face the same dangers as humans. 
but there's no good reason to think this is true. I mean, in theory, fire is, of course, a very dangerous thing, but there are many factors that help animals survive in the wild. For example, some animals seem to be able to find gaps in smoke and fire and slip through them. And more often than not, by getting close to the flames, the animals are trying to save their offspring. Adult cotton rats have been observed by experts to dash straight into fires with the sole goal of rescuing their young. So does this mean that the man who saved the rabbit stopped it from helping its offspring? We can't say for sure because we have no information about this particular rabbit, but we can't rule out this possibility either. So experts urge you to leave the animals alone, even if they're close to the fire. Just let them do their thing. They definitely know better how to handle fires. Well, except for koalas, I suppose. But that's a whole different story altogether. Sometimes rescuing animals can lead to very unexpected situations. A family from Canada found a sick puppy abandoned by either its mother or owner in Yukon. But when the rescued animal was brought to the vet, turned out that it wasn't a dog. What a twist! There were suspicions that the puppy could be an otter, a marten, or a wolverine. Then people decided it was a baby fox because of the white tip of its tail. The rescuers admit that they acted on instinct. They saw the tiny cub, thought it needed help, picked it up, took it to the vets. I think many people would have done the same thing. But experts say they really shouldn't have done that. Now the little fox will definitely have to live in captivity with people taking care of it, although it could grow in the wild. Although without its mother, the baby would have no chance of survival, but we can't rule out the possibility that people simply scared the mother fox away when she moved the cub to a new place. In that case, the fox could have returned to get it, but couldn't do it. This means that now the mother will never see her cub again. But if mistaking a fox for a puppy might seem like a stretch to some, when it comes to leopard cats, that's an entirely different situation. These cats grow to the size of a typical domestic feline, yet they retain their wild instincts. No wonder mistakes happen. One farmer saw a spotted kitten wandering alone and took it. After three days of trying to care for the baby, the farmer realized it was no ordinary house cat. He later handed it over to the local police. Although the man clearly had good intentions, it's hard to call everything he did a rescue. Most likely, the farmer unwillingly separated the kitten from its mom just as the Canadian family did with that fox club. Situations like these create additional problems by taking up the valuable time and attention of the hardworking employees at animal rescue centers. They already have their hands full caring for and nurturing animals that would have been fine on their own. This is the fault of the animal lovers with good intentions who want to help out, but somehow do this. Not the way it's supposed to be done. Help me! Help me! Even if you're an expert in animals, it's not always wise to rescue every animal. While you may have the desire to help them all, there's a catch. If wildlife experts attempted to save every endangered animal, it'd lead to chaos on Earth, disrupting the natural balance of ecosystems. Here's what I mean. Predators thrive by preying on other species, typically targeting those that are weaker and more vulnerable, and many scavengers can only rely on them as well. Yes, you can feel sorry for the rabbit or for a fox cub, However, being potential prey, they can give life to another animal. Whee! Animals have to stay free to be who they are, biologists say. It's sad, of course, when someone's born to become prey, but that's the way wildlife works. The circle of life is sometimes hard to witness, but no animal's death is ever in vain. And guess what? Even when it comes to spiders, things aren't that straightforward. Many people would squash a spider if they saw one indoors, but others show remarkable kindness by capturing the spider in a jar or similar container and releasing it outside. But does this truly save the spider's life or actually doom it? Bye, have a great time. Experts say it all depends on the species. If the spider's a local species, it can probably survive outside as well. But if the spider has relocated and then become a house spider, it's likely to die. This is because most spiders are adapted to certain places and temperatures. For example, the American house spider comes from the northern part of South America. No doubt, it'll survive just fine outdoors if your backyard's in Brazil or Guyana. And then there's the giant house spider native to England. It moved west when the British settled British Columbia, Canada, and later this species made its way south to Seattle. Today, this spider can be found in homes in the northwestern United States. But this species is almost never found outdoors, although Seattle's climate is quite similar to London's. 
If this spider ends up outdoors, it's very likely to die if it doesn't find shelter in time. So what's the humane way of dealing with a spider? If you see a spider crawling up your bedroom wall, don't crush it, but don't toss it outside either. Instead, move it to another part of your house where you don't mind having spiders, like the garage, the attic, or the entryway. Depends on the house. And if you want fewer spiders around, for example in your living room, seal the cracks with sealant, rags, or gaskets because there are always spiders living in all buildings, from 50 to several hundred of them. There's no getting away from that. Or from the thought that there might be a few hundred spiders nearby. I have to be honest with you, although I understand that spiders are an important part of the ecosystem, I can't feel sorry for them in any way. But I do feel sorry for the baby bison. On May 20th, 2023, a herd of bison was crossing the Lamar River in northeastern Yellowstone Park, Wyoming. At one point, the calf became separated from its mother, and a hiker decided to step in. He tried to help the little bison make it to shore. Is that a good thing to do? I guess so. But after that, the rangers repeatedly tried to reunite the calf with the herd, but found that it was rejected due to human contact. All because of our scent, which means a threat to bison. The abandoned calf also created a dangerous situation on the road by approaching cars and people. Unfortunately, this behavior was dangerous, so the rangers had to intervene. They decided to put him to sleep just a few hours after the rescue. In Yellowstone National Park, visitors were advised to stay at least 148 feet away from all wild animals, including bison, elk, and deer, and at least 295 feet away from bears and wolves. As you can see, bison are perfectly capable of rescuing their calves on their own. Check out how the bison mother uses her body as a shield, protecting her calf from the current. And a couple of years ago, there was a story about a calf that was carried away by the river. The film crew didn't get involved, the calf was found by wolves, but that's what we talked about earlier. However, in the end, the mother found the calf, and together, they chased the wolf away. That's how this whole situation would have ended without human intervention. The bison mother would have found her calf sooner or later, too. The tourist, by the way, was fined $500, also paid $500 to the Wildlife Protection Fund, plus another $40 as various fees. You should feel sorry for the man. He must feel terrible because he obviously loves animals and wanted to help and save them. But things didn't turn out well. If only he'd watched our channel. You said it. Bison are back. And while we're on the subject of bison, here's great news. After a century, they're finally returning to their native lands. Dozens of wild bison returned to their historic homeland last week, which marks an important step, especially at a time when the last remaining American bison are usually kept in cages. As many as 60 million bison once roamed North America before European settlers hunted them to near extinction. But now the animals are back. Vaping Squirrel a resident of Wallasey, UK, went for a walk in a park and found a squirrel puffing on a vape stick. Literally. I spotted a squirrel on the ground eating something, which at first I thought was a giant red pepper, the woman said. When she got closer, she saw that the squirrel wasn't holding a pepper, but a bright red vape. Then the animal climbed up the tree with the vape and settled on a branch. Holding the device in its little paws, the squirrel skillfully employed it for its intended purpose. Why? nobody really knows. Maybe there was some kind of nut blend inside? Very bad CGI. A social media user shared a very funny moment from the movie that shows how much CGI has changed since Titanic premiered in 1997. Yes, the movie still looks very cool, if you don't pay attention to the details. The scene shows us a view of the upper deck of the Titanic's bow, but once the camera starts moving and then zooming in on the passengers walking around the ship, things start to look weird and quite ridiculous, like typical CGI of those years. And although Cameron has always talked openly about the use of special effects in Titanic, it doesn't make the situation any less funny. Super Banana If you've already pictured a giant banana, well, this one's not quite like that. It's a bit less exciting, though definitely healthier. News is out that a group of scientists from different countries have developed a genetically modified super banana that packs in a whole lot more nutrients, particularly vitamin A. 
Vitamin A deficiency has been a long-standing issue in poor countries across Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia, causing stunted child growth, blindness, and increased vulnerability to lethal yet treatable diseases like measles. The Super Banana offers a potential solution to this problem, and it's ready for cultivation. However, scientists are currently awaiting approval from local governments, which could pose a significant challenge due to the general skepticism surrounding anything labeled as GMO. Spoiler alert, GMOs are harmless. Furthermore, the Super Banana holds great promise in saving numerous lives. Anyway, let's wish the scientists luck. See you later.